So good morning to all of you. Welcome back to the Namaste experience. It is Tuesday and happy St. Francis Day. Today is the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi. Someone I, you know, think about now and then. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today. The, the most important aspect of his experience, which I believe we are called to fully embrace as well. And that is to really do this, not to talk and pretend or uh, play the, the ego's game of spirituality, but to really do this. What does it feel like to really fully, completely embrace this path? To be simple, to be humble, to stay awake, to be fully awake. So I wanna start with a song, which is a song that I, I wrote and sang when I was performing the one man musical based on the life of St. Francis all over the world. And I've always loved this song because it's, it's like St. Francis himself singing to us. And I, if you want, imagine that. Imagine Francis, sharing this message. Stay simple, stay humble, and stay awake. Stay simple, stay humble, and stay awake. you call him and I have answered everything that you need with everything that you need be like the birds of the air the flowers breath. 
Stay simple. Stay humble. Stay awake. That's the guidance and the advice. The only advice we need that's given to us. We have a tendency to overcomplicate everything, don't we? One of the things about St. Francis that made this come alive for him is he kept it simple. He wanted to see if it was possible to do what Jesus said to do. Not just read about it and pontificate, but to really live it. And of course, back then, they said something very similar to what we would say if someone attempted to do such a thing. They said, oh, come on, that was 1,200 years ago. No one can do that now. It's a different world. We can't do this for real. Just like we would say, oh, that was 2,000 years ago. This is a different world that we live in. We, I mean, what, hold on, maybe, maybe there is a way. Maybe it's not so much about what it looks like, but what it feels like, the way that we surrender so completely to that divine impulse, the way that we trust completely every moment, realizing that everything that happens to us every moment is conspiring to our awakening, which wakes us up and keeps us awake if we choose. Now, for Francis, that meant giving away everything, giving everything to the poor, and then living with the poorest of the poor. And at first he was laughed at and scoffed and mud was thrown at him because how dare you? How dare you try to do such a thing? But here's the thing, trying to live in such a way is contagious. It is the great contagion to do it for real. Because each one of us, ultimately, that's what we really want. And we, we know this somewhere deep inside of us, even though there's always that part of us that wants to hold back a little bit, hold on to a little bit of what we have. Uh, to give everything to everything makes no sense to the ego, but it makes perfect sense to the soul. And Francis was an example of just that. Give everything to everything. I was talking to someone about that yesterday. And they said that saying the words, changing it to give everything to everybody felt strange, every body, as if we're supposed to give this to people rather than everyone, to give everything to everyone, to see that one, the whole perfect extension of the love and the loveliness of God in everyone to give everything to that. And this is what Francis was an example of, to the point, you have to remember that he, he lived in the, the 1200s, and it was right at the end of what we now call the Dark Ages. But it was also the beginning of another great era that we call the Renaissance. And Francis was one of the great inspiration of the art and the poetry and all the amazing creations that took place in this Renaissance, this new light had come by someone who simply wanted to see if it was possible to really do it. By the time Francis died, a quarter of the continent of Europe was Franciscan. Not brothers and sisters necessarily, but the third order, which are lay people. All of the great poets and writers and artists from Giotto to uh, Dante, they were all Franciscans, third order Franciscans, because it's contagious. Doing this for real inspires people because deep down is what we all want, to live this for real, not just talk about it. Consider the lilies of the field. They neither sow nor do they reap, and yet God gives them everything that they need. Can we take that literally? God's going to give you everything you need if you give everything to everything. 
I promise you it's true. But in order for that truth to become self-evident, we first have to let go. We have to begin by surrendering. So this morning, I was reading a little bit of A Course in Miracles, and there are two lessons in particular that I, I think speak directly to the experience that Francis was having at the beginning of his conversion when he made this decision to see if it was possible. The first is lesson 128. The world I see holds nothing that I want. Let me read the first paragraph. The world you see holds nothing that you need to offer you. That's a big one. Do we think there are many things that the world needs to offer me that I'm deserving of? But what we don't realize is everything we value is a chain. So you see, someone like Francis and so many other mystics from every tradition, the reason why they were able to ascend to the level that they were was because they wanted only the experience of heaven now. The experience of that. And Francis, by giving everything, certainly achieved it. And we're called to achieve it as well. Heaven, right here, right now. If that's our only desire, then that's the only thing we will receive. So once again, the world you see holds nothing that you need to offer you, nothing that you can use in any way, nor anything at all that serves to give you joy. This is a tough lesson. Believe this thought, then you are saved from years of misery, from countless disappointments, and from hopes that turn to bitter ashes of despair. No one but must accept this thought as true. You have to accept it if you would leave the world behind and soar its petty scope and little ways. Are you ready to accept that the world you see is nothing but petty and little? Do you deserve pettiness and littleness? I think not. But you can't realize what you do deserve until you step back and realize, I can do this for real too. I can give everything to everything. It may or may not mean that you're going to give all of your abundance away to the poor. I don't know. Probably not. But it's certainly going to mean that you're going to give yourself completely. No hold back. And what that looks like is what that will look like. And that doesn't matter. It's the spirit of it, the desire for only one thing. We'll call it heaven here and now. Then, of course, we, we get to the next lesson, which is very important. And beyond this world, there is a world that I want. So even though I realize there's nothing here that should hold me back if I do this for real, I need to now to, to accept that there is something beyond this world that I really want. And here he says, this is the thought that follows from the one we practiced yesterday. You cannot stop with the idea that the world is worthless. For unless you see that there's something else to hope for, you will only be depressed. Our emphasis is not on giving up the world, but on exchanging it for what is far more satisfying, filled with joy, and capable of offering you peace. Think you this world can offer that to you? I think not. At least not consistently. There may be moments of light, moments of insight. But then it all, it's like the gravitational pull of the earth always pulls us back. Stay here. Don't do this for real. Don't take this literally. Whatever you do, don't take this literally. Because what happens when you do, you feel a sense of freedom beginning to well up inside you as you begin giving everything to everything and you find yourself beginning to lift. It's like we are all this huge helium-filled balloon. I've said many times, and I believe that you believe this, that you are already filled with light. 
just like that balloon is already filled with helium. But with all of our attachments to the world, all of the things that we value, all of the things that we hold on to, they fill that basket so that that helium can't do what it does best, lift above the earth. That's the only thing it wants to do is to soar. But if the basket is filled with all of these attachments, it can't. So what happens? We begin to realize the valuelessness of each one and we throw it out. And here's another one. There's another one. Before you know, we begin to lift. You are filled with light now. You are whole, complete, healed, enlightened. But unless we realize that the world that the ego has made for you will never give you what you really want, until you realize that you will be stationary, you will be locked in place, you will not be able to fulfill your birthright, which is to soar. You are filled with light now and forever. Now, for someone like Francis, it took great trauma to get there. The equivalent would be, let's say, a soldier who went to Vietnam and was captured and was thrown into a terrible prisoner of war camp where most people died. That's what happened to him. He came out, as you could imagine, changed. And he began somehow to look through all the things that he thought were important before. Because you have to remember, he was the, the leader of the rebel makers. He was the rich kid in town who had all the money and everybody flocked to him because he was the one that was usually throwing the party. But he came back a changed person. There's nothing here that I really want. What I do want is everywhere. What I do want is everywhere. Heaven is not somewhere. Heaven is everywhere. If I would but choose to see through the facade. And so Francis was one who became like a child again. He let everything go to the point that there was nothing left but that light. And that's why he inspired so many in his time and 800 years later still inspires us because he was like a child. Jesus said that unless you become like a child, you cannot enter into the kingdom. Maybe that's what he meant. That you, you have to be innocent. You have to be playful. So before Vicky comes on, I'm going to share one more song that was from that musical. <laughs> This, I think, was the essence of Francis on this feast day, and it's our essence as well. Be like a child a day, don't overcomplicate what's simple. Don't need to throw away what's simple. Oh, 
song Francis would have liked. And by the way, one of the, the uh, decisions I've made in preparing for my sabbatical is I'm relearning that musical so I can go back on the road and share it, uh, hopefully when I'm in a CZ again. And also, um, there was, uh, right at the beginning of COVID, I, I wrote a, a musical based on St. Francis starting the first, uh, the tradition of the nativity scene, the live nativity scene, which he started in Riccio, Italy. And so I, there's a whole musical based on that, which I'm going to be sharing here at Namaste before I leave. Yay. So those of you who are here will be able to see that. So I know someone else who lives this simple message, and that is Vicki. So Vicki, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you and would love to hear what you'd like to share. Morning, Brother James. Good morning, everybody. You know, when you first started uh, in, the, in our just time of quiet, the first thought that came to me, and then it's been stirring in me is, I'm not my own. I belong to love. I belong to God. I'm not my own. That, it was, it's just been kind of reverberating me in me all morning as you've been speaking, because it makes everything so simple. Because if I'm not my own, then I don't need to take care of everything. I don't need to do anything. I don't need all of the things and, and ideas and things. I belong to someone. I belong to God. I belong to love. I belong to love. And because that's the, the only experience really that I know that has been consistent, that whatever God may be, however it's a frequency, a vibration, a consciousness, it's a consciousness of inclusion. It's a consciousness of joining. It's a consciousness of being one, of, of love, of giving. It just gives. And I, I'm not my own. That is like, just keeps, like, I'm not my own. How simple is that? I belong to love. I belong to God. And, and, and I do feel like we are writing with our everyday experience, all of us, this story of the next renaissance being the awakening and the end of self-centeredness and the end of slavery to the ego. We've been enslaved with a tyrannical slavery that has tried to crush our spirit and there's a there's a great awakening just like he says in the course there and we're part of it and we've been given even language and words for it in the course but it's happening in every tradition because the common denominator is love it's brotherhood whether there's an injustice here or a sickness there we're called to share and to help and to give of ourselves and to and when we when I live in that mindset of just, I belong to love, I don't belong to me. There's no more me to uphold and take care of. I belong to love. And I will recognize what love brings me to, where, what it 
gives me, what, how it takes care of me. And I'm really seeing it, especially the last few months. I'm seeing how simple my life has gotten. I eat simply. And I thought, oh, I'm not cooking anymore because I cooked for my whole life for so many years. But that's not why I don't cook. I don't cook because I don't need to. I love simple. I can eat a hard boiled egg and a cracker. I, I eat simply, like everything has gotten simple. It, the other day, my TV programming, whatever it is, stopped working and I had no TV. I couldn't find my glasses, my re regular glasses, and the recliner chair, Teddy's chair that I use stopped reclining. <laughs> that's good I guess I don't need any of it and and I always you know we all have special things we watch perhaps I watch mash that's my whole my whole entertainment field from seven to eight and I said oh I don't have mash I guess I don't need it anymore and but it's so simple when my first thought oh I've got to fix this I've got to find my glasses I've got to fix the chair I must not need it anymore that's how simple life can be so I don't need it anymore. And I find, okay, I just enjoy just being. So I would say the other word that comes with simple <laughs> for me is everything is simple and I'm really enjoying it. And I find, I'm finding, especially this week when no TV, no glasses, no chair, oh, I'll just enjoy being. And how simple is that? And who the, whoever's to call me, I'll respond to whatever I'm to do, I just rest. I'm so simple, I don't even put on music anymore. Because in a sense, I feel like there's a sound of silence that I'm hearing because I'm feeling it and I'm recognizing it. And when I put any music on, it kind of distracts me and it doesn't, it's not quite the same harmony. Even beautiful music, classical music and all kinds of things that are out now, they're not the same as the sound of silence that has, it's like an enveloping orchestration of a simple being. And the closest word I have these days is to live simply and enjoy it. When I pay attention to the moment that isn't complicated with fixing something or changing something, but letting everything simply be, there's an enjoyment that's like a child. It's like it tickles me to think everything's so simple. I don't need clothes, I don't need more food, I don't need to get anything. Somehow everything has just collapsed into just being and recognizing that simple is I belong to love and I'll let love take care of me. I'll let love show me and and it did. The other day I was going to go, I was going with my sister to drive. She was going to drive, but she was too tired to drive. So I drove, but I do need my glasses to drive. So I had put the wash in the dryer just before she came. And out of the dry, out of the washing machine fell my glasses right on the floor in front of me. And they weren't broken. Where are they? Here they are. They weren't, these are right, real glasses that I need to drive with. These are the two dollar dollar store glasses to re just see up close with but they fell at my feet out of the wash as i was putting the clothes in the dryer and i had to laugh i said oh, you're so much fun god you are so much fun <laughs> really enjoying this i didn't need my glasses so i didn't need to look for them because i figured i don't need them i don't have them i don't need them but when i did need them because i had to drive because noreen did not want to drive i had to drive i needed glasses and before I knew I needed them, they were literally thrown into my hands. They were on the floor and they were better. They were too loose before. But since they went, it was hot water in the hot cycle <laughs> and they were in the spin cycle. Somehow they shrunk a little so they don't fall off. <laughs> so look at that. The Holy Spirit's plan for fixing everything is perfect, but it's simple. And I, Love is simple. And if we don't belong to ourselves, I, we are not our own. I am not my own. I belong to God. I belong to love. That's simple. And I think that's all Francis knew too. Francis knew he wasn't his own. My life isn't mine. My life belongs to love. 
love is the universal experience or expression for God that doesn't seem to alienate anybody. All of us can recognize that. And that's what simplicity is for me. And I'm having so much fun learning how to keep it simpler and simpler. And I'm not making an effort. It's happening. It's being given to me. Not like, oh, I'll give up cooking or I'll give up shopping. There's nothing I need to get. Or I, I, and I see that when I'm with my sisters or friends and they want to go to a store. I say, I'll wait in the car because I'll enjoy just being. I don't need, because there's nothing I need. What do I need? Another shirt? No. You know, what do I need? Nothing. I, I have everything. Thank you, God. Because I belong to love, and love takes care of me. And that's, I feel like, is the message of the awakening. We're awakening. The new renaissance is we are awakening to love. And it is a collective experience, and hopefully it will spread like the greatest contagion, like wildflowers. But we are the home base of it, each of us. We are the nucleus, the center of it. And because we are one and our minds are open and that we're letting all of the distractions fall away, that's what real simplicity is. There's nothing in my mind I want to pay attention to except the presence of love. And then I do want to enjoy it and I do want to give it away. So I, I'm so grateful for Francis and I'm grateful for that, uh, that archetype of transition because we are the story, the presence of that transition now from an age of self-inflicted slavery to an age of total love and generosity and flowering and enjoying and childlike simplicity of being present and enjoying the air and the ground and the snowflakes and the sun and all of it. So I love you all. I, I so much enjoy each brother, each one of us here with all my heart. I love you. Thank you, Brother James. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Vicki, as always. So as we close, I, I just want to show you all something uh, to see if, if you can relate to this. How many of you are the, the black sheep right here in the middle? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, as the rest of the sheep all go over the edge. <laughs> excuse me, we're going the other way, aren't we? And the way that we are going is the way of love. We're not going over any more cliffs. We're not here to follow the stream into insanity. As Vicki said, we are here to just to create a new renaissance where only love is real. That is our only goal. So let's just keep pushing through the crowd in the other way. Excuse me, excuse me. All the way home. Thank you, everyone. Namaste. Have a beautiful day, everyone. See you tomorrow. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. I love you all. Bye. Bye.